Welcome everyone. I'm Katie Nelson. I'm Katie the Creative Lady and you can find me at katiethecreativelady.com. I just have a quick little video for you today sharing some tips for easy pet pages. I want to talk about some supplies and how to pick the best photos, some tricks for templates, and just some fun creative little ideas. Now, if you're like me, you love your pets very much and they become part of your family. So it's important to include them in your albums. I'm going to take a quick walk through of my collection Paws and Claws, which focuses on dogs and cats. These are the three by four journaling cards or they're also known as pocket cards. You can use them for any type of scrapbooking, whether it's pocket pages or traditional layouts. Now I am a digital scrapbooker, but I wanted to include that these tips would work just fine for paper scrapbooking or hybrid pages. So you can see I have a variety of cards that work for both dogs and cats. The three by four, there are 12 of those. And then the six by four size, which are horizontal, there are 12 of those. So you have options for which size works best and which orientation you like. Lots of fun colors and sayings. I love the little checklists for each pet. I think those are a lot of fun. I also am including some screenshots of my papers that you can see. I've got some cute cat and fishbone prints and some mini prints and solids. A little fun fact about the fire hydrant paper is that my daughter, who is a design assistant to me, drew those fire hydrants. So we made a paper out of them. And we've got some cats and dogs, paw prints, bones, grass, a fun plaid and wood print, and a couple more solids. So there are 18 papers included in the paper pack. There are also a set of digital stamps and brushes. I love to include stamps in my collections because then you can use them on multiple projects or in different color schemes if you like, or for creative projects like cards or right on top of photos. Digital stamps are great, love them. And there are 12 of those in this uh, collection. Now, all of these are available individually, but I always put together a money saving bundle of the cards and papers and stamps and I'll show you the templates. And that's going to be the most economical way to buy these pieces, but you can also get them individually, no problem. I love layered templates. That's one of my favorite things to design. And it's nice because they are like page maps that you can use over and over. You fill the, in the spaces with your papers and photos and journaling. And if you are not sure how to use a template, I have a great tutorial on that that I will link in the comments. So I include four single page templates and four double page templates. And double page templates are especially nice if you like to work on photo books and wanna upload a double page to that photo book. But also a great way just to see how the pages look next to each other. Outside of the bundle, I always include a set of printables. These come in four sizes that work for planners or for framing to include you know, at home or work, just to add some fun. So those are always one of my favorite things. And I love these particular ones. I think they turned out really fun. Okay, when you get your pet photos together, I have just a couple of tips for you. Uh, when you are going to make a page about your pet, it's fun to include a variety of sizes of photos. Um, and that adds some visual interest to the page. One thing I will talk about is you know that there are pet eye problems sometimes in photos where the eyes are kind of a glowing green or sometimes they can even be a reddish or yellowish. Um, that's something that a lot of photo editing programs can help with. So whatever program you're using, be sure to Google how to adjust for those. The best thing you can do though is when you're taking the pictures in the first place, would be to use natural light and not a flash. That really helps. Now, these pictures are not 
all of them the best quality. These are from 1999 when we adopted our Cat Figaro. And I didn't have a great camera. I did end up with a couple of good photos here, but a few of them are kind of lower quality and that's okay. Just go ahead and use them, especially if you're using them on smaller spaces. They'll usually print up just fine. Um, just a little background about our cat. We rescued her um, from the Humane Society. My son, who I think was a, almost five years old at the time, wished upon a star one night for a cat. So of course, being the milk toast that I am, <laughs> I went and you know wanted to get him a cat. Well, that was very similar to the story of Pinocchio wishing upon a star and also, this cat looked very much like Figaro the cat from Pinocchio, so that's where she got her name. So just a fun little page about her. I like using my best photos on the spaces that have a paper layer behind the photo space, and that adds a colorful border to the photo and kind of calls attention to it. I just used the solid papers on those spaces and then include some of the cards and a fun little print around the middle space. The few template tricks when you're working with this collection or many other types of templates. So there are usually horizontal and vertical spaces. In this case, I included some square spots for photos. And you may think, well, I don't have square photos or the cards are not squares, but there are lots of ways around this. It's okay to be creative with those spaces. Um, this is our dog, Ginger, who we adopted from the Humane Society in 2001, and we had her for 10 years till she passed away. She was a golden retriever and such a sweetheart, just a really gentle, kind, loving dog. That top left picture of her is actually a vertical picture, but there's a lot of just playground equipment in the background that we didn't need. So when I put that into the spot on the template, I just focused um, that square portion of the photo and it turned out great. Also the one below it with the red border is similar. That's a vertical photo. I was taking a picture of uh, something I had hung on the wall behind her and ended up with a good picture of her, which was noticeable, which was notable because she was always scared when I brought the camera out. I really bothered her. So feel free to be creative with those photo spaces, but you can also do the same with your cards. Now I'll show you on the next screen how that top middle card there, the square spot with the doghouse in, actually came from a horizontal journaling card. You can see that I ended up, by using only the square portion of it, I ended up cutting out the dog bowl with the dog food, but that's okay. I, I got the part that I wanted to show and added some color and theming to my page. Also, a lot of journaling cards that have, or, or pocket cards, however you prefer to call them, that have um, the design mainly in the middle are great for using in square spaces as well. Here's a page that my daughter scrapbooked using these templates and this kit. And this is her dog, Piper. And Piper is still a puppy. She, uh, they, uh, ado they adopted her right after Thanksgiving. And she's a golden doodle. She's really cute. And I wanted to share a couple of fun things about this page. I like how she used the pattern papers as elements. And that's a great way to add some of the pet theming. And I love that middle picture on the top being framed because that's a really great picture and a lot of fun. I love that she included a lot of personality of Piper. She's got her favorite toy there. And one of my favorite parts of this is the way she told the story. She told it from the point of view of the dog. And I'll just read you the journaling real quick. Um, it's about grandma and grandpa's house, which is referring to me and my husband because we are Piper's grandma and grandpa. So this says, they say Disneyland is the happiest place on earth, but they are wrong. It's actually grandma and grandpa's house. It was so fun to visit them for my first Christmas. Grandpa was quote sloppy and dropped a lot of food. Every time he did, I was reminded of how much I love him. Grandma is a super cool lady who gives the best rubs. 
She spends a lot of time in the kitchen and I would watch her while being the best dog ever so I could try to score some food. Sadly, it never worked on her. One day we went to visit a lake. There were so many birds and I wanted to chase them all. I was so excited about getting them that when I went to run after them, I landed face first into the lake. It was so cold. So I love that being told from Piper's point of view and I think that's a really great way to include some journaling about your pets on your on your pages. Here's another layout about Piper and I love that my daughter used one of the digital stamps right there on the photo and that acts as a title and adds some real creative uh, interest to the page as well. When you're using a busy background with these fun pattern papers, it's often nice to have a border around your photos, a, a white border or a, a color that would stand out against the background. So you can um, edge your photos with that or use a white paper behind or, or a different colored paper. And that really makes them stand out. A trick for photographing your pets, of course, would be to use treats. Um, they respond very well to that. If you, it helps too sometimes if you have somebody else who can hold the treat up behind you. But if not, you just have to get good with um, making sure they can see that they're going to get a treat and having them wait for that. And it's good to reward them for their good behavior. And it's a great way to get their eyes on you. Um, be sure to get on their eye level and their level when you're taking photos so that you don't just have top-down photos of them. Go ahead and kneel down on the floor or get right in front of them and take a picture. So I hope these ideas will get you excited about scrapbooking your pets and um, help you think of some creative ways to add them to your albums. Uh, again, you can find me at katythecreativelady.com. I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel. That always helps me out a whole lot. Thanks so much.